Welcome, Power Fans, to the third episode of the West Bend Power Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Ball, and on this week's episode, we'll sit down with goaltender Gavin Wolmacher and get to know the man behind the mask. We'll also take a look back at last weekend's series against the Oregon Tradesmen and this week's series coming up against the Wausau Cyclones. All right, welcome to the podcast, goaltender Gavin Wolmacher. Welcome, Gavin. Thank you. It's good to be here. Awesome. So we, we did this with Woodsy last week. We, uh, we, we did an interview. We sat down. It was over there, but now we're over here. Uh, sat down, and we started with, with the podcast face-off. So I think I did six or eight questions. Uh, it was, it was well-received. People liked it. So, so we're going to try 10 this time. All right, so we'll start here. What is your nickname? Uh, I got a couple. I All right. Wooly or Knockers? Wooly or Knockers? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wooly or Knockers? I'm not going to ask for an explanation. No, you <laughs> don't. You probably don't want <laughs> Perfect. Uh, your favorite NHL team? Oh, that's a tough one. I've always been a bandwagon growing up. Okay. Uh, I'd say now that I'm older, I kind of understand more the home crowd type deal, so I'd, I'd probably go with the Penguins now. Okay, right on. Your current vehicle, what are you driving these days? Oh, I drive a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Okay, what color? It's blue. Okay, right on. Uh, is that your first vehicle, or have you had a couple beaters in there? No, I've had a, I, I initially had a 2016 Jeep Wrangler, just Sport Unlimited. This one's a 2018, so my dad uh, spoiled me a little bit <laughs> over the summer. Perfect. All right, favorite TV show? Oh, that's another good one. Uh, I'd probably, I like a lot of TV shows. Um, I'd probably have to say either The Ranch, The Friends, or South Park. Okay. Yeah. All right, here's a tough one. First celebrity crush. Oh, that is a tough one. <laughs> I would probably have to go with uh, Jennifer Aniston. Okay, Friends, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite holiday. Ooh, the more I've gotten older, the more I'm really appreciating fall. So I'd probably go Thanksgiving, okay. Thanksgiving, and then Christmas is definitely a, a close second. Up. Awesome. All right. So we're coming up on Halloween. Yeah. What was your best Halloween costume? Ugh. So, okay. I, I actually have a good one. It may not be cool to everybody else, but I really enjoyed like, chemicals and and zombies and bio biohazard stuff so there was this one year i think it was i was probably like 12 or 11 years old my mom and i found this biohazard zombie like creature thing oil spill burnt skin flesh it was it was just really in my opinion really cool and it was definitely i i okay. still have good memories for that one today awesome favorite cereal favorite breakfast cereal Either Honey Nut Cheerios, 100%. All day, all right. All day, all day. <laughs> that was an easy all one. Day. Yeah. All right, what song have you listened to the most in the last week? The last week? Ooh, either Overtime or Eastside Sorrow by Zach Bryan on his new album. Awesome. 
Last one. All time favorite movie. Ooh. Step Brothers. Oh. Step Brothers. I think that was up there for Woodsy too. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. I wonder if that's a team thing or or just just good taste. Good okay, taste, yeah. just good taste. <laughs> All right, that'll wrap up our face off segment of the podcast. So now uh, that we got to know you a little bit, let's talk about your introduction to hockey. What uh, what got you interested in hockey? I, I'm assuming as very young or? Oh, yeah, very young. Okay. Um, you know, coming from a family that was mainly soccer heavy because my grandfather came over from Germany during the end of the war. And then my dad obviously grew up playing uh, soccer because of that. I, I started with soccer, but, you know, my dad always liked hockey, just never could afford it for him when he was growing up. So I was lucky to have that advantage and have my dad there to awesome. kind of support it and lift it off. And then obviously the support from my mom as well. Okay. Helping me uh, to get out there on the ice. So you started at mites then? Um, I'd say probably three years old, uh, three, three, three years old, four, three to four. Yeah. Skating. Okay. And then obviously it, it grew. Um, I started out in this little rec league. It was just a tiny mini rink. Um, and, Mount Lebanon, I know. Probably not many people from Pittsburgh, but that's <laughs> shout where, out. Yeah, shout out to Mount Lebanon, <laughs> little studio ice rink, and you know, it kind of took off from there. Okay. Uh, at what age did you kind of gravitate towards goalie, or did it start early on? Or it, did, it definitely it, it, started early okay. on. Um, my dad said I kind of gradually went back into the net, even playing as a player. I don't remember that very well. Okay. I feel like he kind of forced it upon me a little bit, but at the end of the day, it, it worked out for the best, whichever way it goes, whoever you ask, my dad or me, or <laughs> even my mom, I don't know, but yeah. you know, it, it worked out. So Awesome. So so pretty young age then, squirts, you started really gravitating towards goalie oh, and, yeah. and played pretty much exclusively goalie since? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so gra you play high school hockey, I presume? No, I played uh, okay. triple A hockey okay. growing up. Yeah. Okay. And did you, you, you're from Pittsburgh originally, correct? Right. I played for the Penn's elite organization for five to six years. And then I started living away from home at 14 years old, which would be my freshman year of high school and just billeting, uh, in Michigan, New York, Indiana, Minnesota last year, and then Wisconsin ultimately. Really? Yeah. So in high school, you what, what, were you technically considered like homeschooled then, or? Oh uh, yeah, or I did. Online? Um, I did online through my high school. I was fortunate enough that my school actually offered it, so I could wow. still still be a part of my high school if I really wanted to come back and do the dances and stuff. But <laughs> I kind of just fourteen years old made the decision and. And so you've been. You said Michigan. Michigan to start for a team named Compuware. Then I went over to Long Island, New York, for the Long Island Gulls. And then that was kind of the COVID year. I would have stayed at the Gulls if COVID never happened because they, well, so COVID happened, they shut down the island. Yep. And they weren't allowed to travel, leave, or do anything with hockey. I think that year the Gulls only played 14 games. Okay. So I went a little bit north outside the city to a place called Westchester in New York and played there and ended up getting a full 60-game season. So at the end of the day, it worked out. I got mm -hmm. playing time and that, that sort of thing. And then uh, went over to Indiana for my last year and played for a team named the Indy Fuel. And, you know, it was an all right year. Um, okay. It's kind of kind of a, a dull year, but, you know, it still still made it work. Awesome. Um, so that led you into juniors then. And mm -hmm. and so you started with the New Ulm Steel, correct? Yeah, that is correct. So was there something about the New Ulm Steel? Were they just the first team to approach you, the only team to approach you? Well, so, yeah, more on, I guess, my final year of triple A hockey, my U18 year. It was, it was a rough year for me. Um, definitely not the way I wanted it to go, um, you know, and I'm a really big on faith and religion, and, you know, that was kind of my year that I found God, and ultimately I really wanted to quit before that and got really depressed, but, you know, something inside of me once I found my faith again told me mm -hmm. to keep going, and... I went to a couple of camps over over the summer, and one of them was the Chippewa Steel Camp, and that's obviously that was New Alms affiliate. Mm -hmm. So I went there. They the they really liked me there, and they recruited me to go play for their team. Awesome. And that was then a whole bunch of stuff happened, but I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> we don't have to get into all of it. So um, based on your your stats, you played a few games with the New Alms Steel. I think three games. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, you were a backup, I think, at that point, correct? Yeah, it was more like a backup, third string. It, it just really wasn't the way that it was presented to me. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff happened with the organization. People got fired. Mm -hmm. Certain things happened, and unfortunately, yeah. it didn't work out in my favor, but, you know, I stuck with it. So ultimately, you get traded to, at the time, the Milwaukee Power, Correct. West Bend Power. Mm -hmm. um, was that a trade that you asked for? Was that something that they just said, hey, knock, knock, who's there, West Bend? 100%. I, I definitely wanted to get out of okay. the New Alm situation. It just it wasn't, it wasn't in my best interest to keep moving forward. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have Milwaukee kind of reach out and say that, like, hey, we need another guy. and. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was able to pounce on that opportunity. Awesome. Uh, so you come to West Bend uh, at the time. Obviously, the organization at that time is in a little bit of flux. They're moving to their third <laughs> rink in five yeah. years. There's a lot of transition happening, uh, a lot going on here at the rink and with the yep. team. Uh, but did you fit right in? Was it a little bit of a transition? Oh, yeah, I, I fit right in. At the time, I didn't know any of the stuff about the organization, like the rinks the, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And how kind of everything was run, but you know, the boys were great and it was, it was an immediate type of instant connection fit awesome. in. And it was really good. Cause I mean, I, I had to fit in cause that <laughs> week we, we drove all the way to the loons in Minnesota and that was a long bus ride to not really fit in with anybody. So <laughs> it was good that we were able to. Could have been a real long bus yeah, ride. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Awesome. So, I, I mean, you've got a, a pretty unique experience here with having billeted at such a young age and, and kind of having that junior experience of, you know, playing hockey, you know, f for lack of a better term, for a living. Mm -hmm. um, what wh is it something you really enjoy? I mean, is this something obviously you're you're getting closer to the end than you yeah. are the beginning. Mm -hmm. So is this something you're going to really miss? Is it? Well, obviously the the goal is to keep playing as long as I can, but mm -hmm. I, I'd say this journey, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I mean, all the school dances I missed, the friendships, the amount of friendships that I made during this journey mm -hmm. and kind of everything that's taken place wouldn't, wouldn't change it for the world. Um, you know, and I think the most important aspect of this entire thing was refining myself in my faith. And mm -hmm. I'm really proud of that. That's I'm awesome. proud that I was able to do that and proud that that was the moment that, you know, I, I, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And I 100%. think that this all happened so I could kind of find my way back. So that's awesome. I, it, how fitting. I mean, we're in mental health awareness. Yeah, ex week, exactly. Or, or time 100%, of the year. And, 100%. 100%. Um, um, let's talk about. So you've been playing hockey for a long time. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have an off season? And if so, do you have an off season routine? Do you go back home? Do you work? Do you hang out with family? I mean, what's what's kind of the oh, the, the lifestyle? You're in for a, a roller coaster <laughs> oh, here. So uh, last summer and this summer, like I said, really got reconnected in hockey. Wasn't doing too well my last season. Whatever we we covered all of that, and then you know kind of relocked it in. And uh, every day, every day in the gym working out. Um, I don't know if my trainer will see this, but shout out Parks Nep Shield. Uh, you know, he, he helped me help me get back into shape and good shape and staying healthy. And then also shout out to my goalie coach, Mike Chase on. I skated with him two to three times a week. And that was just every day, every day on the ice. Granted, my first year I didn't work. This past year I, I worked on top of that. So mm -hmm. I really had I didn't have a lot of time at all uh, for hanging out. It was really I dedicated myself to this grind. And, you know, I really want to really want to do something with it and whether that be moving up to the to the na like pro cop did last year mm -hmm. and then ultimately d1 is still still very much a, a dream for me so okay. um but yeah every day i would wake up in the mornings head to the rink the upmc sports complex train with my goalie coach sometimes even skate with a junior pro skate so that would be two times a day and then i'd head over to the gym get a workout in and then go <laughs> home shower real quick and then head over to work and okay then, I was working until 10 o'clock at night. So it was, wow. it was a grind every day that, you know, you, you mentioned the word grind and uh, the, the little bit of time that I've been involved with the power and junior hockey and hockey mm -hmm. in general. I mean, yeah. there is, if there's one word to describe all of this, it's, it's a grind. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, my son's a first year peewee and, and I, I see what these guys go through these kids. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, for these kids go through and it's like, man, and you watch them and it translates. I mean, oh, you put definitely. the work in and it translates. 100%. 100%. And, you know, that that's that was kind of the unfortunate scenario last year was I put all that time and work in and I rededicated myself and, you know, didn't get the didn't get what I wanted or thought I 
could have had. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was all part of God's plan and turned out to lead to something greater. And yeah. here I am now and got a really good opportunity, really good team in front of me and really good friendships and relationships. So you've had you've had the opportunity to play with some pretty good goalies. I mean, obviously, you oh, mentioned yeah. Adam Prokop. He, mm-hmm. He's moved up. Um, some other mentors on the, either on the team or throughout your journey? Yeah. No, I, I've had a lot. Uh, my goalie coach, I've actually been fortunate enough to have a goalie coach who's the emergency backup for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And also, he, from time... Bad. No, no. And, <laughs> and from time to time, he uh, he helps train, train the Penguins goalies, too, whenever their goalie coach is back home or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's really cool to pick his brain about... Um, you know, Casey DeSmith was one of them over the summer who I really, I like his game and I try and implement some things off of him. Um, but yeah, Casey DeSmith, I, I got to see him skate at least once a week this entire summer. And that was really, really key to see his habits. And then like Adam, we'll go back to Adam. And that was, it was huge being able to practice and having, seeing his mindset for practices is really really helped me this year especially getting out on the ice early like he did and even on Thursdays like today these are considered our compete days Mm -hmm. and just really locking it in and dialing it in and so far uh, undefeated (laughs) every every Thursday practice and we switch teams every week so it's not a team thing okay (laughs) that's good to know um you you've mentioned you know billeting you've been billeting since you were 13 or 14 now yeah. um have you had some great experiences with billing and some not so great experiences or yeah there's definitely ups and downs yes. uh first year was obviously a little bit a little bit weird um i lived with a kid named uh Seamus casey who's now playing at university of michigan and drafted to the new jersey Devils, so it wasn't a bad spot mm-hmm. um it was just trying to get used to everything that first year um he also had some good habits that i picked up along the way um then my second year i lived with uh it was a it was a it was a good year um good year on the ice uh you know it was it was like an awkward phase for me obviously you go through your awkward phases Absolutely. growing up and going yeah. through puberty so i was a little bit uh, a hermit a little bit in my room a lot um and you know i'll just leave that with how that was and then mm-hmm. my third year was really good year really good bam- billet family great it was everything was just great about it in mm-hmm. westchester and then indiana was really good as well um, then I actually lived with an elderly lady in Minnesota and <laughs> it was, it was good. It kind of brought me back to, uh, kind of brought me back to the environment of, of my great aunts who mm-hmm. one of them personal reason, mm-hmm. personal, personal issues. So, but yeah, that's awesome. So far really good. That's awesome. All right. Uh, game day traditions or game day, like superstitions or what's your pregame routine? I, what's got, the- a, I got a lot of oh, pregame boy. routines. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I got to wake up and the, the first half is just kind of doing what my body needs. Mm-hmm. I, I like to get outside, get some sun. That way I'm not cramped up all day. Um, and then I always have to be either in bed or taking a nap by 2.30, 2 o'clock. And then I wake up, get a shower, get all dressed up. I have now just gotten into the routine of retying my tie every, every game. So okay. I do that. Um, and then here, here's the crazy one. I, I head over to Culver's before every game and get a chicken sandwich. Okay. And uh, some French fries and some Coca-Cola. And kids, whoever tells you pop is bad, don't listen to them. It is, <laughs> it is fueling the fire right now. So, But I, I get that. And then, you know, I'll just keep my, my pregame rituals to just warming up. Yeah. I, I have a certain way to warm up mm-hmm. and how I put my equipment on. But yeah. other than that, that's I'd say the biggest one's Culver's. If you want, if you All right. I, I, you know, I've, I've come to learn that certain people have certain meals that yep. they eat on game day and, and yours happens to be Culver's. <laughs> uh, I'm sure throughout the, the journey here on this podcast, we're going to we're going to get to know some of the other oh, yeah. pregame meals. And I'm, I'm sure. sure there's some unique ones. Yep. No, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of good ones. <clears throat> Any other superstitions? Anything with your uniform that is is a little bit unique? I mean, I guess the fighting strap, a lot of goalies don't need their fighting strap, but I, I like to just put it on. Okay. It makes me feel makes me feel special. I don't <laughs> Anything know. about your socks? Oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> a little <so> birdie. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I, no, if you guys come, whoever may be listening, if you come to our games, you may notice that uh, I don't wear the team socks. I wear last year's camo socks that we got for the military night because that was my first ever junior hockey win. And I like to kind of keep it rolling. And so far, it's been working out pretty good for the boys and yeah. for myself. So just going to keep it keep it rolling that way until I 
get lit up, but hopefully <laughs> praying that that doesn't happen. This Not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I, I happened to notice it last week and I, I mentioned it to uh, one of the other players and I was like, is he wearing the can? Do you guys not, did you run out of socks or do you not have enough? Yeah. No, that's no I, I get a lot of crap for it. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been told numerous times to switch it up and I'm like, guys, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Why, why are we, why are you trying to switch it up? But sometimes you got to take a hit to make a play. So there you go. That, that <laughs> Sometimes you got to take a hit to make a play. Bingo. Quote, quote of the day from Gavin Womacher. Right there we there. go. All right, let's uh, let's finish up with with a little game uh, that we're going to start here. Uh, it's going to be called "How Well Do I Know Myself." Okay. All right. How well do I know myself with Gavin Womacher? What is the team in your junior career? that you've faced the most? Oh, um, I guess Oregon right now. Probably. Mm, not correct. No? I'm not going to give I'm not going to give you the answer. Oh, you know the answer. Oh, I do. Oh. Of course. Oh, okay. Of course. Yeah. No <laughs> cheating. I know the answer. But I'll tell you let the me, answer. Let me take a look at that sheet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you the answer because some of the other questions you might be able to figure it out. So okay. All right. what team has gotten the most shots on you? Oh my gosh! In your um, career, now this does include your time here at at West Bend and right, in New Ulm right. as well. Um, St. Louis, correct. Yeah. Any idea good. how many shots? Let's go seventy, somewhere Ooh. in the seventy range. One hundred and twenty-five. Jeez, oh man. <laughs> okay, never mind. Want to take another guess at what team you faced the most? St. Louis. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, single shots in a game. What team has had the most shots in a single game against you? Against me. I'd say Oregon. That last game, I, I was like 50 shots. It was so the the game. It's 48 is the total, and 48. it is Oregon. Okay. And it was the. I don't remember which game it was. It was just. It was this past weekend. Was right? it? Yeah. I yes, think it so. was Oregon. Yep, 48. Mm -hmm. All right. What team have you faced that has never scored on you? The Loons. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how many minutes you played in that game? Oh, um, I'm going to go on a gamble here. It's between 25 and 30. 2604. Yeah. Pretty good. How many shots you faced? I think it was 13. 13. You're yeah. looking at my notes. No, no. I, I <laughs> know, that, was a, that was a good night for me. All I right. Remember that. <clears throat> there is one player in the league who scored against you in your time with New Ulm and with West Bend Power. It's got to be somebody on the St. Louis Blues. That is correct. I don't know who it is. I don't know no. the name. Jacob Hurman. Okay. He scored against you with both teams. Okay. All right, let's talk about your team a little bit. All righty. What teammate, when you are on the ice, you've got a pretty good view of the team, right? Yeah, I'd say so. I, you, you're like the catcher. You can kind of see the whole field, yeah, the whole yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah. Um, what team has the most penalties? <laughs> or what player has the most oh, penalties? Oh, my goodness. This is an e Liam Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew that was going to be an easy one. Who's got the second most? That's tough. Um, and I'll tell you, Liam has 15 or 13, sorry, 13, 13. Is this just this year or is this uh, you're in last year and this year, last year and this year. Um, who's in the box a lot. Is he a new guy? Nope. Not a new guy. I'll give you a hint. He's not even, he's not with the team anymore. He's not with the team anymore, but he is still playing junior hockey. Keller. No, no. Colin March. 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 Oh He's my got gosh. seven. Yeah. Really? He had a he had a five minute or oh yep. my goodness. Uh a couple other guys were up there. Who else was up there? I think uh Delaley was up there. Okay. Um a couple other guys. Uh Odin's up there. Odin Club is up there. He's got quite a few. Yeah, he does have a little bit of a temper. He doesn't have any big ones though. He doesn't have any big ones. He's got those five minutes. <laughs> yeah. th those add up quick. No, they do, they do, they do. All right. Last one. How well do I know myself? All right. Uh, actually there's gonna be two more, but the, this the last one I don't know the answer to. I'm hoping you do. Okay. What teammate has scored the most goals when you're in that? Let's go with Bryce Garber. That is close, but not oh. correct. Um He would be tied for second. He's tied for second. Garber is. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying to think. Trying to think. I don't think it's. He is a yet. current teammate. Current I teammate. I'll go O'Neill. Connor O'Neill with yep. six. Connor O'Neill's got six. Garber's got four. He's tied with two other people. Any two guess? other people. Mudge. Nope. Not Mudge. Current or not current? Uh, one current, one not current. Let's go Keller. Keller. Yeah, he's got four. Um. 
I can't think right now. Butler. A- Andrew Butler. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, Odin Club has got three, and Mike Delaley had three as well. Okay. So that was your kind of your top three there. All right. Um, the last one, and again, I'm going to fully admit, I don't know the answer to this one. When you got traded from New Ulm to, at the time, Milwaukee, mm-hmm. or to the power, what did you get traded for? Do you know? Was it a player? Was it? I don't. I don't think it was a trade. I okay. think it was more because I didn't play enough games. And USA Hockey has these crazy rules where okay. if you don't play a certain amount of games, it's more of like a free agent type deal. I think that's. I think that's what happened. Okay. So there wasn't like, oh, I got traded for a hotel room. Or no, like no, no, bag of peanuts. Bag of or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> no, I, it was more so. I think just kind of like a free release. And okay. I think the same thing happened with Adam too. Okay. In the null, uh, with Lone Star and where he's at now with the Wilderness. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, Gavin, can't thank you enough for joining us here on the podcast this week. Uh, I had fun. I oh, love getting to blast. know you. <laughs> Please we'll, have me back. This yeah, is we'll, awesome. We definitely will. You keep making the performance out on the ice, we'll have you back. I mean, we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Maybe oh, yeah. we'll have to make this a weekly tradition. <laughs> it, it might have to. We might have to throw it in there every Thursday. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again, Gavin. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Yep. Power showed up to the Kettle Moraine Ice Center Friday night feeling pretty good about their position in the league. They were in first place in the Central Division with a 5-0 record and coming off a two-game sweep of the defending Fraser Cup champion Granite City Lumberjacks. Little did they know, this would be the best they felt all weekend. Head coach Jason Woods was seen walking the hallways of the Kettle Moraine Ice Center after the game, muttering the words, to the Shirelles, Mama said there'd be days like this. The lone bright spot in Friday night's 6-1 loss to the Tradesmen was the goal by Bryce Garber in the second period, assisted by Owen Drake and Zach Wolverton. Unfortunately. Power just couldn't get any momentum going on Friday night. Friday night's VersaFoam hard hat hardest worker of the game was Rocco Cicerello. Power packed their bags and headed for Oregon, hoping to at least split the weekend. With Friday night's loss fresh on their minds, the Power took the ice, looking for redemption. Unfortunately, at the end of the first period, the Power found themselves in a similar position to Friday night, down 2 nothing. After the first intermission, the power looked like a different team. They took the ice and scored four times in the second period. The power's first goal was scored by Carter Katerba, with assists from Liam Frazier and Bryce Garber. It was then Jace Fitzgerald's turn as he threw two into the cage. The first was assisted by Liam Frazier and the second by Tegan Shire. After the tradesman tied the game at three with a minute 28 left in the second period, Andrew Butler decided he was going to put the team back on top 4-3 to three with his last second goal assisted by Tegan Shire. After the tradesmen tied the game at 4, seven and a half minutes into the third period, the power were fighting to find the lead. When the tradesmen committed a penalty with a minute to go in the third period, the power found themselves with one of their top scorers, Bryce Garber, in a penalty shot situation. Unfortunately, Garber banged the iron and the period ended tied at four. To overtime we went. Unfortunately, after a quick five minute three on three overtime period, the power found themselves in their second shootout of the short season. Jace Fitzgerald, who had two goals in the game already, started out the shootout and came up short. Recent null pickup, JC Humphreys, put the tradesmen on top one to nothing, and they never looked back. After Andrew Butler came up short on the power's second attempt, the tradesman turned to Captain Parker Mern. The captain didn't disappoint and slipped one past goaltender Gavin Wolmacher for the shootout win. The Cundinger Fluid Power Player of the Week was The Cundinger Fluid Power Player of the Week was forward Jace Fitzgerald.
This weekend, the first place West Bend Power will welcome the third place Wausau Cyclones to the Kettle Moraine Ice Center. Friday night, puck drops at 7.30 and the Power are celebrating Mental Health Awareness Night. Friday's game is sponsored by DNA Hemp. Saturday night, the Power will load the bus and head up to Wausau for the second half of the two-game weekend series. This weekend's battle between the Power and the Cyclones will feature the offense that has scored the most goals against the defense that has allowed the fewest goals thus far in this season. While the Cyclones are coming off a two-game sweep against the Peoria Mustangs, the Power are coming in looking to bounce back from a rough weekend against the Oregon Tradesmen. Come join the action at the Kettle Moraine Ice Center or watch the games online at nahltv.com. Tickets available online at westbendhockey.com or at the door. Here is the answer to last week's Power Podcast Question of the Week. What player has played the most games in Power franchise history? The answer... Brady Rossback with 127 games, followed in second place closely by Max Erstad with 126. Here is this week's Power Podcast Trivia Question of the Week. What player had the most penalty minutes in the 2022-23 season? Email your answers to westbendpowerpod at gmail.com for a chance to win a West Bend Power t-shirt. Thanks for joining us again this week, and tune in next week for more player interviews and game recaps and previews. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the Kettle Moraine Ice Center, and let's go power!